a tragic love story, a supernatural resurrection, and good old-fashioned comic book vengeance, James O'Barr's 1989 comic book series, The Crow, quickly became an underground success, later spawning multiple movies, a TV series, books, more comic books, and, well, toys. That underground success quickly became a pop culture icon that continues to grow to this day. The Crow follows the resurrection of Eric as he's brought back one year after the brutal attack on himself and his fiancée Shelley, which ultimately led to both meeting a tragic ending. The storyline sees Eric, now the Crow, who was guided by a Crow as he exacts vengeance on the group that attacked him and his fiance one year prior, struggles with the pain of the memories he carries with him, and the loss of the love of his life. He may be invulnerable, but the heart wants what it wants. This tale touches on real-world emotions and experiences, oftentimes drawing parallel lines to experiences audiences had or were possibly going through at that time, even Obar himself. This resulted in an emotional connection that has helped cement this character in the hearts of many. With a successful comic, it's only a matter of time before we have a movie adaptation, five years to be exact, a 1994 production that resulted in the loss of rapidly rising star Brandon Lee due to a prop weapon malfunction. A shroud of tragedy and controversy overshadowed the film's release into the world. Following a similar storyline with some small changes, hey, it wouldn't be a movie adaptation if it wasn't adapted. Rife with violence, adult content, and dark undertones, this all-but-black-and-white film still became a massive box office success at $94 million on a $24 million budget. Well, definitely massive at that time and for that genre. It was, of course, only a matter of time before this young lad snuck into a then-Camelot music store to purchase an overpriced VHS copy because he wasn't technically allowed to have it. Shh, don't tell my mom. It was also only a matter of time before a successful action figure or collectible representation was produced. In this case, this version taking only about 30 years. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collects, and remember, we'll be posting a new video at least twice a week, if not more. And if that sounds of interest to you, please click that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. In this episode, we are taking a closer look at the Sideshow Collectibles 1 6th scale limited edition exclusive, The Crow. Okay, everyone, welcome back. And here it is, the monstrosity that uh, a Sideshow 1 6th scale collectible can be. Uh, this is the outer box that it does ship in. I wanted to just take a second and have it in here just to kind of point something out. This is what it ships in, right? So there is uh, address label over on this side. Yep. Right, so I don't want to spend too much time on that, right? Nobody wants to know where I am. Uh, but it ships in this box if you do the standard shipping. I know they offer an upgraded shipping option where I guess they pad it a little bit better uh, or whatever. So it does come in this box, so it is susceptible to potential damage. Uh, I'm not saying that this one was, but I've had some experiences where they, the, the, at least the packaging was a little damaged. And, uh, you know, the advice that they gave was to do that upgraded shipping. So just a little caveat for you, uh, depending on how important the packaging is. I know a lot of collectors, it is very important. It is important to me, but, uh, just to know that that is an option that they present. Okay, there we go. And that is our guy, uh, Eric Draven himself, AKA the crow. What a very cool packaging. Now I did open the cardboard, uh, but I have not looked at this, right? So I went ahead and cut the cardboard and I was like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to jump ahead. And there we go. There's an example you can see right there uh, where it looks like it, it had an impact in shipping, right? And if, if you reach out to, uh, to Sideshow, their response is we do offer upgraded um, additional care shipping. So just a little heads up on that. And then here around here on the back, just to start as usual, um, I apologize for the angle, but with this thing being such a giant, it's a little bit difficult to get it to fit into frame, but very cool, uh, haunting artwork there, right? So that, that pose that we're all very familiar with, uh, Brandon Lee standing there with his arms out. Although I'm not exactly sure that that is a drawing of Brandon Lee. It doesn't quite look like his face, even with the, the shadows on it. But the intent is that, because it is very clearly the same costuming, that same backdrop. Um, you know, hey, if you can find where in Wilmington, North Carolina, that might be. There you go. Uh, that is where it was filmed. And there's our crow. But very cool. I do like the setup on it, like the black and reddish orange going on there. Clips. Uh, they look like they're pictures of Brandon Lee, but they're not. They're pictures of what we are about to look at and so many things that this comes with, right? So very cool on the sides. Uh, 
that classic crow movie logo uh, on the top and the bottom and then on the front that view of what could easily be mistaken for the human himself uh but is the figure okay so let's lay this down and let's open this bad boy so you always gotta love the uh <laughs> the suspense with these sliding box tops right because they always take forever like they create a vacuum of pressure air so it just seems to go really slow maybe it's because we want to be in there so quickly and and get to our our lovely collection investment so there we go that usual band that we see across uh the plastic of one of these and this is a departure from our normal size right this is our one six there we go empty box we'll move that to the side normally we're looking at the 112 or six or seven inch scale but this one um Look, I'm a huge Crow fan. I just couldn't pass it up. And the cool thing about this band is usually it'll just slip right off so you can maintain the integrity of the tape. Uh, if you wanna do that, I just love being able to see the stuff here on the back. Very excited about this. This is the the exclusive edition, the limited edition. You know, I, I don't know where else it would be available, but the guitar was an exclusive that came with it. Uh, so that being said, let's pop these accessories out as normal. Uh, and of course we have a display stand uh, to kind of help prop the 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 character up so because i mean this is quite the investment uh depending on how trusting you are on the balance and how well it will stand some prefer to use the stand to make sure it doesn't fall over or possibly fall off of a shelf okay so we've got that one cleaned out i'm gonna leave the stand right now because we don't really necessarily need to mess with that it's it's pretty self-explanatory uh and then i did also just spend a lot of time talking about it so all right, and then this top piece, let's see, do we have any tape holding it? We do have one piece of tape there, but I don't see any more, so we might be able to flap this thing. Uh, and speaking of tape, on the accessory one that I just opened, there was no tape securing it in place. So you don't really have to violate too much of the packaging uh, as it comes you know, to get into these things. So that that's something for me, right? I open things, but I also like to maintain the integrity of the packaging just in case. I, do I ever put the stuff back in? Sure, sometimes if I'm moving or if I need to temporarily store them, I'll try and put it back in as close to as it came. There's our guy, pulled it out, got all the accessories out. Uh, don't eat that, all right, don't eat that. Um, I know it says it, but uh, you know, just a little advisory. Sometimes we gotta do that, right? Do I need to bring up Tide Pods? No. Okay, well, I'm gonna set old uh, Eric Draven to the side and let's just take a look at this haul of accessories that we have here, okay? So, we're gonna start, let's start with uh, with the, the hands, right? So lots of hand options. So we have two here, uh, a pointing style of hand. Let's go manual on this. Yeah, a little bit different angle, there we go. So. There's our pointing style hands and just look, and, and you can see that they're very similar, right? As far as what we're looking at, uh, obviously the electrical tape that he's wrapped around after the, the, what he's wearing gets a little bit beat up throughout the movie. This is towards the end where he's just collected different things and different repairs, but this is that electrical tape. You can see it's wrapped differently, but we'll be able to still see uh, the details of the, the hand sculpted in there. Let's bring some lights uh, a little bit higher. What do you say? So bear with me here. Let's see if we can get a little bit better lighting on this. There we go. All right. So yeah, just looking at the detail in this, look at that, right? So you can certainly get a, a great amount of detail sculpted into what we normally look at, right? The one twelfth scale, the six inch, the seven inch. But when you get larger, obviously there is so much more room. The, the veins that are in there, the tendons coming through, just all that, the tiny details of a hand. Uh, it, I don't know if a toy can look much more realistic. And, and I know maybe it's, maybe it's wrong for me to call it a toy. I get it. It is uh, a very special one six scale collector's item, um, whatever you want to call it, whatever terminology you use. Uh, it is, it is amazing the detail that they put into these things, right? And so here's our flexibility. So we do have the back and forth. We do have rotation on that. Uh, another one, we have grip hands, right? So again, very similar. And they did do an excellent job of keeping the wrappings consistent, right? So no, no real issue there with the electrical tape or anything like that. Paint apps look fairly decent. I'm going to set this one aside yet again because I'm going to point out right here. Oh. I'm a little too close. Uh, let's see if we can tighten. There we go. Right along here, you can almost see see the line 
where the, the electrical tape was supposed to be. And there's a little bit of flesh tone there. So the mark was slightly missed on that. It looks like I am actually very surprised to be able to spot that. And now that I'm looking more closely, it's missed in a lot of places on this one. I'm curious if we'll see that on a lot of other ones, but it's neat because we can see we've got a, a little bit of a, a, a the, the lighter flesh tone there, but then it kind of fades into a more of a, a pinkish hue uh, to show where, you know, the blood's kind of, I guess, pulled up in the fingers. Hey, maybe it's uh, maybe it's a little cold outside. It's, it's a cooler time of year when it's all going on, right? So there we go. Let's pull these two up. So these are just kind of an open hand, uh, a little bit more of a relaxed shape to them. Uh, let's see if we see any major, there's a little bit of a line right there. You know what, we'll use it. We'll use its own hand to point at it. See right along here, there's a, there's a little bit of a line where some of the uh, electrical tape is a little bit higher than what the intended uh, point was. This one, a little bit cleaner than the last one that we looked at, the, uh, the, the grip hand. A little bit cleaner, you can, you know, let's pull, let's do it again. You can kind of see right along there, it seems to have met the line where it was supposed to and the electrical tape is on it. Uh, let's fix that, just there we go. See, it does, it does work pretty well there. Okay, and then last we have one single hand, uh, and many of you may remember this scene, where he truly can look through his hand before the hole sealed up with his healing powers how about that man that is that is something right there and you can even see the little ring on the pinky finger right there how about that that is very cool that just it's it's a little grotesque um so you know for those who maybe may get a little queasy about that i'm going to take it off screen but we now know that it is there and uh let's 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 break through some of the other stuff so boom all right a sword you know it 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 seems almost odd for him to come with a sword, but there was a point in the movie that that huge battle scene uh, at the club up in the, the, the top floor with all those people, he does pull out this sword. It, it, would this be called a katana? Am I correct in saying that? If I'm wrong, please correct me. Please let me know. Uh, paint job on it. The silver looks fantastic. The gold right down here at the bottom, very well done. Um, it has, it's, it's laid on nice and thick and it's very uh, shiny. So it does give that metallic look to it. I mean, it, it looks like an expensive sword and you can see some of the detail right here in that little hand guard piece. But uh, yeah, I mean, all in all, very cool looking uh, sword here. So that the handle is uh, is also very well done here because you can see there's a little bit of gold showing underneath it, but um, you know the wraps. It, it almost looks like it is truly a a leather material that's going on here for that to for that to do its thing. So very cool to see. Look. Terrible. I appreciate y'all's patience with me with focus and all that stuff. I know that I uh, I do make it a little bit challenging sometimes. But so there we go. The gold in there almost seems like we've got. I can't tell if that's a detail of it of the sword. It is because it goes through on both sides. So look at that. A tiny little detail in there. But then the gold is very well laid on that, and you can see where the wraps are are completed right there. So. Very well done. A big fan of that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's move on to some some weaponry. Okay, so here we have a uh, a, a nice, I mean, very clear which one this is, what model this is. But again, I'm not really one to mention weapon models. Um, if you do know what it is, then uh, you know it's uh, it, it's a it's a pretty pretty well known, pretty legendary uh, style. The detail on it, it looks very good, very solid. And with all of these, you know it. Sure, it is a flat black and standard black thing, but there's always ways that, you know, little highlights can be brought out on this. It's easier to see the detail because it's larger, but you know, maybe what like a, like a, an almost black, super dark blue or a super, super dark gray, just to kind of show a little bit of wear and use and things like that. But speaking of detail, look at this one, right? Yet again, uh, easily identifiable what we're dealing with here. Here's something fun. It does rotate or it does revolve how about that yeah so there we go uh very cool with the the black handle and we even have the silver passing through it right there to show where the metal is where the the grip is attached to it nice little details on there i fully don't expect that to move but you know good paintwork because we've got the black hidden in there and then uh the silver and oh my goodness look it even pops to the side 
for that. And you can even see, granted, I'd, I'd be surprised. I mean, I suppose they could be silver, but look at that. That just the tiny amounts of detail. Those are the things that really stand out. And for these, the, the rare times where I'm able to invest in one of these, I'm like, yes, it is a sound investment. And on the end, we have an open spot. So if you have any blast effects that are this size, it is set and ready for it. You know what, let's look back this one as well. A little bit smaller hole, right? But it does have a hole, right? So we're kind of kind of dealing with maybe uh, caliber and keeping an eye on that. Speaking of caliber, let's go massive. Uh, and yep, very clear what this is. And yes, of course it does. Of course it slides or has the nice pump action to it, right? So. Good paint apps on this, the silver mixed with the black. Um, happy to see it. It's it's um, it's just a solid looking uh, weapon right there. Massive hole in the front. I'm not sure if there is a blast effect that would that would fit in that hole, but you know what? That's okay. It's uh, it's at least worth looking into and maybe trying if you have something out there. But very cool. Uh, lots of great weapons that come with this. Okay, and then here is a strap for the guitar. Um, right, so it's got little holes on the end that can be attached to the little pegs for carrying it. And this is truly a, a very thin, but it is a piece of leather. And thin, of course, because you want it to be able to have that ability to drape, right, on the smaller scale. Uh, granted, it is pretty big, but on the smaller scale, if it's too thick, it's not gonna do this. It's not gonna be able to have that almost natural looking drape when it's on there. So very cool to see. Uh, and of course the weight of the guitar, look at this thing, is gonna help pull that uh, down and make it drape properly. If, it, if you saw a picture of this, would you be able to tell that it was a miniature version of a guitar? A, a one six scale, if you will. I mean, this thing, look, I'm no guitar pro, but it looks amazing. I do see uh, right here, a little bit of something on it, uh, you know. Maybe it'll, uh, maybe it'll clean off. I'm not sure, but you can see there's a little bit of white lines right there where something was maybe rubbing up against it. Maybe the plastic. Hopefully, it's not wear that's permanently stuck in the gloss coating. But uh, you know what? If it is, I'll deal with it. I'll, uh, I'll be fine. And then, I mean, even the the bar kind of moves. It is very thin and potentially frail, but it does move a little bit. Um, no movement on the dials or the switches, which is good because I, I kind of think that might be pushing it as far as uh, ability for it to uh, outlast time. Uh, but then as you can see, the strings do work. So very cool. Uh, just little bits of string in there and that's that's nice. It almost looks like it's maybe fishing line because uh, it has a silvery look, but then it also has a very clear look at certain angles and certain lights. But very cool. Uh, I, I think it's an excellent little ad. Who knows how much extra I, I paid for that with it being the exclusive version, but I'm, I'm here for it, obviously. And then last but not least in accessories, the, the, the very animal, the being that made it all happen. It came pecking on the, uh, the old gravestone until somebody rose from his grave to exact vengeance on uh, on his attackers, his and his fiance's attackers. There it is, the crow itself. So this thing is ready to be set perched on things, right? Wings don't really wanna move or anything like that. There's no real articulation to this, but it is very well done. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a very good looking crow. There could have been maybe, you know, I, I always say it, a little bit of a paint wash to, to pull out some things, but a crow, is a black bird. And here we have a black bird. We do have detail in the eyes. Let me see if I can get the zoom to work with me on that. Uh, zoom and maybe lights. Let's bring some lights up. So there we go. All right, zoom and focus. There it is. So you see good detail on the eyes, right? So it's got that brown, uh, sometimes it looked almost reddish in the movie and the tiny little black dot in the middle surface of people. So very cool. And then a uh, nice open mouth for saying some caw, caw, bang, blank, I'm dead. Um, just to quote the movie, blank, because we gotta keep it nice and clean. So there we go, there is our crow. And speaking of our crow, let's pull the crow out and start taking a look at this guy who is suited up with some accessories, uh, not these plastic pieces. Let's go ahead and pull those off, right? I do appreciate the extra bit of protection that they provide in packaging for these things, right? Even if, sometimes, pardon me, while I move some of these accessories out of the way, even if 
And look, since we've got the box moved, we can bring this down and change the angle. So let's do that. What do you say? Let's bring this down and let's change our angle. Okay. So bring it up. Thank you for your patience with me while we mess with camera angles here. Everybody's favorite part of watching a video, right? So there we go. All right. And here's our guy. And as you can see, I got the, uh, the, the main simple plastics off already, but you can see there's one right here in between the head and the neck to help protect that. So first things, let's pop it off and let's take that plastic off. Cause that, and look, look what, look what immediately shows through, but the necklace with Shelly's ring on it, right? So a very thin piece of brown string to match, to look like the, the, the piece of leather that he uses after he gets this from the pawn shop. Uh, and just hanging from there and it looks like a regular ring and it looks like it's a, a, a size that would fit on one of these fingers. Maybe it looks like it'd be a little bit large, um, you know, but uh, who, who am I to judge? I don't know how big Shelly's fingers were, right? I have no idea. Uh, the actress, Sophia Sheenas, that played her, right? Maybe we can ask her. Maybe it's the right scale, but okay, here we go. Let's, let's break this down. First, let me see if I can get the coat off real quick just so that we can look more closely at Mr. Draven. And you know, I might be one of the only ones, but I always prefer uh, the lack of the trench coat, right? There's just something more sleek, probably because it's a lot more of the promotional images. We saw this, especially when it first came out and uh, he spends more time, I feel like, like this. But anyway, here we go. So let's take a look at this face, this head, this masterfully sculpted representation of Brandon Lee. I'll tell you that, I am, it is amazing to me what people can do in sculpting these things when a living person is uh, a model for it. But when you have someone who has unfortunately been gone for, what, 30 years now, and you can come up with a representation this clear, this clean, this detailed, it is absolutely amazing. The hair is uh, is sculpted, right? So it's not a, it's not a loose um, hair, which is good, right? Because then we can keep that texture, which keeps the same attitude. I think if it was uh, tried to do actual loose hair, it would have definitely taken away, right? Sometimes you see these and it actually has regular hair, but that I think was a good call because then we can have this piece hanging down. It just adds to the grittiness, right? The, being out in the rain and just doing whatever he has to do at any time to, to, to accomplish his goal. But the paint apps on this thing, phenomenal, right? So you can see, you can see the scars on the nose. You can see the thin line of where he copied the, the drama mask that was hanging on the mirror when he came back. The makeup, the white makeup that was applied, you can tell that it's fading. You can see skin tone showing through it. You can see where some of the black has just faded from just all the use. It is just so well done. I, yeah, I can't believe it. And the eyes, the, they look real, right? It looks like he would be staring into your soul. Um, and hopefully for good reasons, because, you know, he's he's out to, to stop people. He's out to end existences. Okay, enough about that. Let's check some flexibility here. So side to side. Not bad, right? So we got we do have hair that could get in the way, but all in all, not bad. And it looks like, yeah. So underneath this is a, this is a flexible neck, right? So it's, we've got a flexible material. So underneath we have some articulation that's helping with this movement side to side, and then the up and down. Uh, the hair is going to get in the way a little bit, right? The neck will shift back some to give it some upward look, but it does look up. It's not staying straight forward, and then downward also very good. So it has. It has an initial down and then the neck can travel a little bit further down so he can look very sad, um, sad Eric, right? So there we go. We'll bring that back up. And then of course the arms, right? So we've got that good typical flexibility of these creations, this, this model, right? So good, like that's, it raises up very high. Uh, we do have the ability of rotation. I can feel that there is a rotator cuff in there for the deltoid, right? So it will rotate all the way around. I don't feel the need to. I don't want to stress the uh, the fabric of the shirt too much. There is a bicep tricep rotation. You can feel it through there. Uh, elbow. Looks like we got double just by seeing the shape and seeing how we've got a bend there and a bend there. So double elbow, which gives excellent flexibility, right? So there we go. 
Good to go on that one. Uh, do we have any forearm rotation? No forearm rotation, but we do have a very mobile wrist with uh, very good wiggle capability. It's a lot of back and forth, but it does have very good all the way around. And yeah. And then on the same side, the, the other side, we have that same functionality, same flexibility, same articulation, but gosh, just in looking at this normal breakdown of this, I don't want to take away from the detail of this. It is amazing, right? So the, the spandex the Lycra shirt, whatever that he puts on, which is probably from, a, you know, the Hangman's new show or one of his normal band wear dresses. He puts that on. He puts the leather pants on. It gets holes in it because, right, stuff happens. He ends up in all kinds of battles. They have the holes. They have them where they don't look like they're going to easily tear. We've got the repairs here, right? The electrical tape. We've got the rope to serve as, you know, additional repair. I mean, it, woven in and out of the electrical tape. That The detail in this, from being such a big fan of the Crow uh, since it first came out, it is amazing to see this. Uh, we do have some movement up here at the, uh, the lower rib cage or mid torso. Uh, we do have waist rotation. But I'm going to throw out there, if you rotate too much, see, it does make this stuff buckle. But the good news is there's not a lot of uh, crow poses that you see where there's a whole lot of crazy like Spider-Man like poses. So you can definitely make some intimidating looking crow poses without having to push uh, the limits on that. And usually, right, these these one six scales, they are a lot uh, posed a lot more like the pieces of true artwork that they are. The pants are fantastic. Uh, it's great to see some 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 good old representation of leather pants. Feels like they're more of like a pleather uh, or a very um, very lightweight thin version of leather. I'm gonna go with probably more like pleather, right? Uh, we've got the buttons on here, those gaudy buttons right there. I mean, hey, let's let's talk about a look at me button layout. But I mean, these these the, the, the leather pants, right? These are the leather pants that he wore throughout the movie that made many people in that era wonder, hmm. Could I wear leather pants? Yeah, uh, Ross found out on Friends if he could or couldn't. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out. Here's the repair down here. We've got electrical tape with the uh, supporting rope. Okay, and then leg flexibility. So decent, like it'll go to the side, but as far as a split, you can see the pants, as would in the normal human trying to wear leather pants, they do not allow a whole lot of movement. And that is not something I want to stress but it will go fairly high considering what we're, what we're dealing with here, right? So not too bad. Um, I, I can't really complain. We do have a uh, rotation at the joint. So it's not like an upper thigh rotation. It's actually at the joint here. It does rotate fairly well. Um, knee, we have a, feels like a double. Yeah, we've got a double knee in there, but again, with these leather pants, he can barely limber up. He can, he can grab the heel but we don't have a lot of flexibility because we don't want to stress and pull those pants too much. Uh, no calf rotation. We do have good foot rotation. It looks like maybe at the top of the foot right here, you can see a line. There's a little bit of a break. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there we go. There's a little bit of a break right there where we do have some rotation on that. And then of course the foot has the up and down, but with these massive boots, even though they are half unlaced and wide open, it will kick up fairly well. But going backwards, eh, you know, not the best, not, not too much as far as back, but again, not massive rotation. We do have some good side to side, not really much of a, I mean, you could do the, the ankle breaker like that, but not the usual ankle breaker capabilities that we see. But again, to say that these are not necessarily designed to have crazy poses. These are more museum pieces, if you will, because of the detail, right? So the tongue flapping down right here the laces on there, the, 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 um, gosh, I know the name of that, but I can't think of it, but the, the holes for the laces are all painted silver and painted very well. So agates, right? Aren't they called agates, aglets, something like that. Aglets. They're, they're all painted silver and they seem to be painted pretty well, right? They almost seem like they might have a little bit of wear. It's like intentional painting and the ba the boots have, uh, they're like a, almost like a leathery type material. A, a harder leather than what this would be. And they seem like they have, you know, some, some creasing that normal wear that you see on boots that gets in the middle of that. So, I mean, just, I, I, I cannot stress enough how fantastic this thing is. And for me, in thinking about the, the kid who snuck into a video store or no, a music store 
to pay an absolute fortune for a VHS copy in the middle of a broken down mall because I wasn't allowed to have it. You know, it, it, it was it was a little bit too much for my household at the time. So I had to sneak in and buy that VHS copy because I just, I had to have it. But there was nothing like this for us, right? Uh, McFarland Toys did release the uh, Movie Maniacs version and you know I was on top of that when it came out, but it was nothing like this, right? This, this is just a, a whole new level of detail. There's no real issues, you know, as far as like paint apps, maybe some with the electrical tape on there. But I mean, look here, we even have burns where some of these holes happened. Uh, I can see a seam through this hole uh, for one of the arms. You know, not much can be avoided with the way that this is built. It could have been one of those uh, seamless bodies if we've got the neck made of this material. You know, it could have been one of those bodies that had the the uh, metal skeleton underneath and then this uh, all over top that could have been used. Uh, but I guess it was a, a money saving thing right there. But anyway, it's on the back, uh, can't be too mad about it, I guess. Um, interesting wavy choice right there to show the uh, electrical tape. I'm not sure what electrical tape makes that kind of shape, but anyway, um, what do I know? You know, I think that might just be a protective thing, maybe if the guitar is over it. Uh, who knows, because it does not come over the top here. But anyway, just a lot of fantastic detail. The thing is, is if you if you're interested in picking this up, if you have the funds to do it, I definitely, yes, absolutely recommend it. Um, let's check out this little trench coat before we go. Because, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, I'll keep him in frame. Let's see. Oh, nope, nope, I'm gonna move him because he's falling and we don't want that to happen. But let's take a look at this trench coat, right? Because look at this liner. How, we, would you have known that potentially this trench coat had a paisley liner from the movie? Maybe if you paused it at the right spot and it was a bright enough scene, but, Paisley liner sewn into the inside of this trench coat, which is made of the same leather material as the pants. So that is, it's good to see that matching, right? So you don't have a different material when it's supposed to be the same thing. We've got the holes, the massive holes cut into it, right? Because he got attacked. Swords, all kinds of stuff, uh, handguns, just all kinds of things out there. We've got the belt. It is permanently tied because it is sewn. A little spot sew right there to keep it tied but tied back each little button look at these little buttons right they almost feel like they're metal if they're not at least a hard plastic and each of them sewn in just like a normal button would non-functional pockets but that's okay uh massive cuts on the sleeve here right to match the fact that he is he's definitely battle worn and we've got buttons on both sides made of a different material and it, it i really think they are metal they certainly feel like it so they have kind of like a a bronzish color to them, which is just, just great. Okay, I, I, I rambled on, I went too far along for a uh, movie recording, but here we are back. But as I was saying, we don't necessarily have buttonholes here, um, but it does have little little bits of, of string sewn through to give the impression of the, the holes where it could be buttoned together, right? For that closed trench coat look. But all in all, excellent. It does look like a miniature trench coat and I can feel there's a little bit of tiny wire in here, right? So a little bit of flexibility or posability with the bottom of the trench coat. You can see just kind of that, that does it have a wire test? And yes, it holds that shape. So that is, that's great, right? Uh, how many times would it be have, have been great to see something in soft goods with crazy detail with a wire for posability? And there we go, all boxes checked on that. So. That being said, that is it for our guy, our Eric Draven, the uh, one sixth scale, about 12 inches, maybe a little bit taller. Um, Eric Draven, right? Brandon Lee from the uh, the movie The Crow. And uh, we'll be right back with some 360 views of this masterpiece of a, of a museum display item. Uh, thanks. We'll be right back. Okay, here he is, our 360 view of the Sideshow limited edition exclusive 1 6 scale Eric Draven Brandon Lee the Crow um, and this just got released not long ago fantastic ad if, if you're interested in it and you were on the fence I say definitely go ahead and tip over treat yourself because it is a fantastic representation of the character of the actor uh, I love all the accessories so no issues, nothing that stands out that I think is a, a major opportunity for it. Um, as a massive fan, I am extremely thrilled and extremely pleased. I hope you will be as well. 
and I do appreciate you stopping by as always. And uh, there we go. That's our guy. Well, that about does it. Thank you, as always, for joining us on this collecting journey. Look for a new video each week, if not more. And be sure to subscribe and click that like button. It would really help us out. And as always, it would really mean a lot to me. If you'd like to see some more videos, there are a couple of quick links on your screen right now for you to check out. And no matter what, thanks for taking the time. And remember, we are all in this world of collecting together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks.